Yo! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Oh my gosh! What is going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the analysis video for Coronation. And let me just first say that hearing the fact that the event itself on Muni wasn't called Coronation naturally was quite funny for me to say the least. They even mentioned within the episode how the idea of it being called Coronation versus Coronation on Muni would have made more sense due to their practical obsession with corn. I guess Marco was living on Muni for such a long time he forgot exactly how to spell Coronation properly and corn is nearly everywhere on that planet. But what am I doing? I haven't even done my intro yet. So today we have one episode to cover and one massive episode to cover indeed. Coming from the previous episode with Eclipsa using her spell to be able to remain in contact with Globgor to inform him of her mother's instructions to potentially free him, we have Star who keeps her word in organizing Eclipsa her very own coronation alongside with Marco and Janna sending off invitations to many monsters throughout the kingdom. There was even an appearance of Babs who I guess no longer has bronchitis cause ain't nobody got time for that, Rastacor whose body has grown exponentially as opposed to the way he once was in the episode yada yada berries but he still has them baby legs so <laughs> and there was another assassin sitting there as well alongside with the others apparently they all don't seem to like eclipsa for some reason and well since Rastacor is a part of their tiny group, they might also be in agreement with Divide amongst monsters and humans like how Toffee was. However, that theory wouldn't hold up very well considering the fact that Babs and the other assassins seem pretty human themselves. However, they could be working together temporarily in order to get what they want in the end. I for one don't understand as to why they don't like Eclipsa in particular, but maybe Solaria and or Eclipsa's previous reigns affected both monsters and humans to some degree. Continuing on with the video, we're then shown with Star and Tom passing out flyers for the event, eventually stumbling upon Moon's new village for the Mumins on the verge of finding new homes. And to Star's surprise, Manfred is revealed to be free from the yada yada berry stoning. He refused to go into detail on exactly how he was freed, but it was probably just due to the curse being lifted finally. He even goes as far as stating that practically everyone in the village opposed Eclipsa, since let's be real, it was mostly true. Oh please, Moon. All those who oppose Eclipsa say I. I. All right, that's enough out of you. Go make yourself useful. Honestly, I'm happy Manfred got freed and moved away from serving Eclipsa. He obviously wasn't a true servant and never had interest in helping monsters in general. Surely Eclipsa will find an even better person to take the role as a more trustworthy companion. Star soon finds Moon and invites her to the coronation who accepts it despite still having second thoughts about Eclipsa herself. She mainly shows up for Star due to noticing her maturity growth and knowing her hard work put into the celebration. River, however, decides to go out in the woods for the hunt of the bog beast of Bagaba, to which I thought was a person that runs into situations without thinking ahead, much like how River was trying to explain the star that episode. Congratulations, pumpkin! <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> I am not the bog beast! Of course you are! We've all been the bog beast at one point or another! All Eddie here has even been the bog beast twice! <laughs> Never learn! Being impulsive and running into situations headfirst without thinking is your specialty, dear. I suppose there could be a potential threat River is right about, and even though his warnings are subtle and sound silly, for all we know, in the end, he could be unintentionally referring to Mina Loveberry lurking around scheming throughout the forest. So, Tom and the rest make it back onto the auditorium, and Eclipsa gets her makeover by the Ponyheads again, only this time they don't overdo it. And I thought they were supposed to be in jail for plotting against Ponyheads, Head and being some of the people technically responsible for knowing of Eclipse's whereabouts during her supposed abduction. Plus, Star even mentions in the recent episode that Seahorse was even taken into custody due to being responsible for the fake kidnapping of Eclipsa. Now that Seahorse is in prison for kidnapping Eclipsa, Ponyhead thinks he's hot again, but he's in jail. They're never gonna see each other. So... I don't know. I'm probably just taking this way too seriously and it was just done for comedic effect. The coronation is about to begin until suddenly Eclipsa manages to have an excuse to travel back to the monster castle for some strings to repair her randomly broken string on her guitar. Star decides to check and make sure that Eclipsa is alright after minutes of her not arriving back on time only to coincidentally find out about Globgor's freedom. Eclipsa suddenly returns in order to warn everyone of his return and advise everyone to go back to their homes. 
The MHC take over and interrupt to instead tell the audience that doing so would only get Globgor to consume them one by one. Star asks the clips of the potential whereabouts of Globgor, who guesses that he's probably at the bog where River was since it was originally Eclipsa and Globgor's meeting spot. The entire event is then on lockdown and Eclipsa and Meteora are both immediately restrained despite Eclipsa claiming that she had nothing to do with the matter. Globgor is then found and seems threatening at first but only is attempting to escape Muni in order to protect his family since seeing him would apparently only strike fear into the hearts of the citizens. Which obviously ended up not being the case once Globgor is then given a chance to show his face in the public eye. But things go south and it's basically Globgor versus the MHC once Globgor witnesses Romulus anxiously crystallizing Eclipsa trying to prove that she's evil. This fight was incredible. I mean, we even get to see Globgor using different parts of his body, increasing the size of it in order to fight them off. So not only can his kind of control the size of his body as a whole, but he can also control different parts of his body at a different time. The only major disappointment about this fight was when we see Hekapu attempting to fight. Like, <laughs> didn't you try the same method to defeat Toffee and it didn't work out too well? Why are you still fighting using the same technique? Anyways, Meteor, while still locked up in her cage, dips down in order to free herself and get to Glavgor, which gets the attention of someone in the crowd and then Glavgor himself. This eventually gets Glavgor to break free from Omnitraxis and save Meteora from the surrounding flames. Now Meteora dipping down during this time could have been one of the major moments that Glossrick was preparing her for in the future. But I also feel as if Mina for example is another large threat that he was preparing her for the most. Do you remember the last time Meteora went up against Mina? It's then decided that Glavgor should be given a chance once everyone is encouraged by his actions and explained by River that he willingly remained in the crystal for the safety of his family. And this moment right here within the episode was a great one. I mean, when you think about it, River was basically the main one of a side to Moon herself who didn't exactly trust Eclipsa. Yes, dear! I never liked you. <laughs> uh, he was talking about the broccoli. But the episode doesn't stop there. Who freed Globgor? Well, Star of the Wise instantly figures out the culprit himself. Romulus. Who else? This is the guy who can crystallize and uncrystallize living beings at any time he pleases. His actions in Crystal Clear back in Season 2 didn't exactly help his case with Star. And most of all, the rooster was shown still having its beak closed shut. Romulus even soon admits to his horrible deeds, claiming that it was in order to prove of Eclipse's wrongdoings and to help. So Eclipse using the crystal pulverizing spell that her mother used for battle was out of the question this time. Even Hecapu of all people on the Magical High Commission doesn't approve and decides to lock him up for false accusations. And I mean Hecapu. She was basically the one who was responsible for switching out Eclipse's daughter Meteora with that other chick Festivia. And yes, I literally almost forgot her name because she is just that insignificant to me. Now don't get me wrong, I for one found this to be quite suspicious despite all of the evidence thrown at us, and I was about to make this over the top theory about Eclipse of planning out the entire thing, but, I mean, would it make sense? Why would she need to scheme anything else? She even found it surprising to finally see Glavgor when he arrived. Plus, don't think I didn't check the Book of Spells of Eclipse's chapter so that I could potentially find a spell that allows the user to control another person besides depending on possession. Unless Eclipsa used the self-esteem spell in order to reduce Romulus's self-confidence and believing of Eclipsa's state of her being evil, which motivated him to anxiously willingly prove the fact that Eclipsa was indeed evil herself. But that's all I personally have and honestly just saying that out loud in this video sounds like a long shot. And it ends with the Magical High Commission taking Romulus into custody and Eclipsa with Globgor finally singing happily ever after about their unity and being back together again. And man, we have my girl Eclipsa with that powerful singing voice. The episode then closes showing of Mina's main bird used as an experiment in order to later dethrone Eclipsa and restart the Solaria program flying around. And that bird is awfully intelligent so I wouldn't be too surprised if it's actually trying to give information back to Mina Loveberry. Now as for those monsters I were referring to earlier, I wonder if they'll happily volunteer with Mina to take out Eclipsa or change their mind. There was even a short clip of the chameleon in the background from before who was about to yada yada Eclipsa Eclipsa, so it could happen. Plus, if they were planning to make the drop on Eclipsa, where were they? I guess they canceled their original plan after the whole Globgor incident went down. So once again, without further ado, thank you all for watching yet again another analysis video by The Next Big Thing, and I will catch you all. Wow, I almost forgot my own lines. <laughs> In the next one. Peace. Till the day you broke my heart, and now it's
Too little, too late. I like this. 